Hello, and welcome to GBRI's presentation, Neighborhood Design Practical Planning. I'm Rebecca Joan Brown, GBRI's Director of Education, and I'd like to welcome you to the course. Today we will be looking at various aspects of the neighborhood planning process and at how sustainability can be integrated into the project scope. We will first briefly look at the planning process overall, then highlight the considerations that are specific to sustainable neighborhood and community design. We will look at the lead indie credits that are relevant to neighborhood planning and illustrate the concepts discussed with practical examples. So now we'll move into section two of the course. Here I'll highlight some of the considerations that are particular to sustainably oriented neighborhoods. We'll be looking in this section at sustainability in the most classical sense, meaning in terms of something that is maintained in perpetuity with little to no outside help. This definition includes not only environmental initiatives, but also the social and economic requirements of a neighborhood. The first factor that might come to mind for sustainable project planning is habitat preservation. This involves a more in-depth consideration of the ecological communities that already exist on site or that have been disturbed or displaced by previous developments. The development footprint or the area that will be covered by buildings and roads should be designed to avoid sensitive habitats wherever possible. This often contrasts with development goals, which generally want to make use of all acquired space to maximize the built area and therefore the profits. One solution here is to designate an area to be set aside for preservation and market this as a feature of the development, including a nature preserve, bird sanctuary, or undisturbed waterfront nearby can raise property values and ensures residents and occupants that future developments on site will not be likely to disturb them. Now that we've looked at some of the sustainability concerns that can be addressed in the neighborhood planning process, let's move on to see how some of the credits in the lead ND rating system address these concerns. While the credits we'll go through today are by no means the only way to create a sustainable development, they do provide a good framework for sustainable developments. So we'll again start by looking at habitat preservation. There are a few credits and prerequisites that deal with this in LEAD ND. And we'll start by looking at two prerequisites from the Smart Location and Linkage, or SLL category of the rating system. So prerequisite two in this section deals with preventing development on sensitive habitats. In order to comply with the prerequisite, planners should enlist the help of a qualified biologist to conduct a biological survey of the site in question and determine if there are any endangered or imperiled species or ecosystems on the site. If this comes back negative, then it's safe to proceed with planning as usual. If the biological survey does reveal sensitive communities, however, uh, planners will need to make some concessions. One option is to set aside the area that's home to the species or ecosystems and set it aside as a preserve um, and protect it in perpetuity by a land donation or other similar arrangement. Um, projects should also designate a 100-foot buffer zone around the sensitive area where no development can take place. Projects can instead comply with a conservation plan that's designed in accordance with the Endangered Species Act that's particular for the ecological community in question. The first case study we'll look at is the Southeast Falls Creek development in Vancouver, British Columbia. The neighborhood was actually designed around the 2010 Olympic Village, and the planners based the project in sustainability from the start. 
The project began in 2006 and in 2007 became only the second project in the world to earn LEED Platinum status. The project is built on a former industrial site that had become a source of blight for the neighborhood. The area has been redeveloped with a projected date of full completion in 2020. The neighborhood is organized into more dense blocks with a well-connected street grid to make getting around easier and more convenient. It truly is a mixed-use development, including an elementary school, retail stores, parks, a community center, and the former Olympic Village is being converted into new residential units.